of Focus Weekly for the first or second week of uh, January 2012. Mm. This episode of Spring 12 is upon us. Cloud Focus Weekly is sponsored by Arcus, our community experts. I'm your host, Jason Atwood, and joining me for the first time in this year, although the seven, 75th time overall, Justin Edelstein. Justin, how are you doing? I'm all right. I'm getting over a little bit of a cold Okay. in the new year. Yeah. Maybe all that New Year's fun still, like, in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but overall, doing really well. Great. We have not podcast in a while. No. The we, fans have let us know. We, they have. Sorry to have disappointed you. Yes. Uh, Everybody's got to take a break. We had, like, vacations and time and travel, and it just didn't yeah. work out. It's tough. It's tough running a business and podcasting. Yeah, and, and it, was sadly, our, it was our year end. We had a lot of stuff to do right. and off-sites. And really, it was our off-sites that kicked the last yeah. week out. And the week before, we were just traveling and whatever. So, uh, sorry about that, but we're back. We, we are back. We're going to try to do roughly 52 a year. And that means some weeks we're going to do doubles, like on the Dreamforce weeks. And so, it all kind of... Basically, once a week. It evens out. Yeah, it evens out. I, I think, think we, we did, did. I think we had 49 last year. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty consistent. Pretty consistent. As far as consistency goes, that's an, a nine. Is that three nines? Not I quite three. I, I'm just going to let me stretch out so I can pat myself on the back. Why? Uh, What'd you do? Uh, no, for doing doing that well on podcasts. Oh, all right. Um, all right, so we have an agenda today. If we're a little rusty, that's because we haven't done it in three weeks. Uh, we have three things to talk about. Uh, a blog post about 2012 cloud computing predictions. Uh, are these real predictions? Or are these, like, as some of the commenters said, um, pure nonsense with no facts? FAQs. De- de- frequently asked questions. Frequently asked questions. Makes no sense. Uh, did you really write fact? FAQ? Most of these are pure nonsense with no FAQs to prove the point. That's Thank that. you for that very clever that and act- insightful comment. That actually makes it better. Um... We'll, we'll go over it. And we'll talk about it. Uh, then we have then to match mash up with our uh, with basically my predictions for 2012. I did one last year for 2011. Uh, was Mashable seven predictions for social media? That'd be kind of fun to talk about. Yeah. And then uh, we'll go into the spring release, spring 12 release notes since they are out and they've been changing and they're full enough that we can really talk about it. They are uh, now. Fully released, and you have a uh, rapid reaction blog post, which generally gets a lot of attention on our blog. I like to react to the release notes rapidly. Yes, sometimes I, too rapidly because I do them off the pre-release notes. Right, you miss something that I I miss out. things yeah. and like because they're not there. Yeah, and then you know the the change log isn't on the pre-release notes, so you don't even see it when you open the real release notes. It's not on the change log, so so we'll go into that. Yeah. And then we'll make our Cloud Focus app pick of the week. Let's do it. All righty. So first up is uh, predictions. Uh, so last year I made more than a few predict- predictions. Uh, just quickly to to review the things that didn't happen. <laughs> I talked about streamers sort of making a stand against the cable companies. I think some of that's happened. More cable, more the other way around as cable companies have sort of tried to combat the Hulus and Netflixes by creating their own streaming. And then HBO and Showtime created their own streaming. So, like, everybody's trying to get into the streaming game. Uh, a new social service emerges. Eh, Google Plus, maybe. Nothing really is taken. That counts. Yeah, I guess. That counts. We knew it was coming. You got though. that, though. That counts. We, we knew I'll it was give coming. you a point right. on that one. Uh, open Clouds Bloom. So, this was basically talking about open source cloud movement. I think we don't really pay attention to this industry very well. I pay attention a little bit. Um, you know, it's getting there. I don't think it blooms so much. Private clouds die publicly. Honestly, in the last six months, I haven't heard anybody mention it. It's sort of become a non-talker, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. I don't really listen to private clouds anymore. Uh, death of the disk. That's clear. That happened. Yeah, that was there, easy. There are no debt. Yeah. And then my long shot was Apple buys Salesforce. That was my 2011 predictions. Your 2011 long shot. Yeah, that was my long shot. And then this year, uh, as per a suggestion from a loyal fan, uh, I decided to add confidence points. So a 1 to 10, 10 being the most confidence, uh, uh, 0 being least confident. Um, and I had a couple. Why don't you pick one that you want to talk about? Because they're going to go to blog.arcusinks.com to read about it. So right. which one? Pick one that you like or dislike or want to discuss. It's funny that you always put an Apple buys something in all these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, that's going to be my running joke. Well, so next year is 2013s. There's going to be something. In yeah, there. the one that I um, that I really think is um, your confidence was at a seven, but I think is somewhat likely to happen is the meetings go free mm -hmm. or at least trending towards it. So this is the notion that you know WebEx, GoToMeeting, um, and others like it uh, will be more free or close to it not necessarily like free go to meeting but more you'll already be using a tool set that will all of a sudden include the ability to do this type of thing yeah and this is and based on the trends that have been happening yeah that webex and go to have been still charging but you're seeing all these competitors pop up both on the social networking side which allows sort of free meetings yeah and then we know what's happening on the salesforce side i just figured by the end of this year webex and go to better figure out how to charge for other stuff because I honestly, unless it has significant value, it's going to be so, so many ways of doing this for free. So. Yeah, when Salesforce comes out with the ability to do the, the integration with DimDim right. and Google Plus, you know, if, if you can figure out how to use that internally with the huddling, uh, it's almost there. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see what happens to these companies like WebEx and GoTo are sort of the market leaders. I remember when live meeting was a big one i haven't been on a live meeting in years the right. microsoft, microsoft product one. yeah i haven't been on one I've of those been on one. one of our partners does and it was horrible first of all it's all silver light you gotta install oh you gotta install yeah. like plugins you have to install something with all of these right but we use webex and go to so often that it's already there it's already yeah. installed like, I always find it funny when I send someone a GoTo and they're like, oh, I'm just installing the thing. I'm like, wow, really? You don't go on GoTo meetings? Right, but GoTo. And anyway, uh, yeah, I think the writing's on the wall for this, uh, these types of services to be just added into already existing tool sets as value adds to right. those as opposed to um, charging for them ad hoc or standalone. So if I were Google... I would buy one of these puppies, or well, one that's free, or maybe a open source one. Dim Dim obviously is gone. I would buy one, and I would just include it right in my Google event, like a check, a clickety box, as we like to say. Yep. That's like have have a meeting and conference number yeah. included in event, and like I would just make it so included part of it that you wouldn't even think about it. Right. Um, if I I'm were, hoping Salesforce does that with their events. I think that I think Salesforce is going to do that. It I seems think like Salesforce is thinking of it more in a in a um, I'm using the word again ad hoc fashion that like you're doing a support call and you're on the phone with somebody and you can just boom send them a link. Right. As opposed to like thinking about use utilizing it as part of the calendaring function. I'm hoping that that's where it goes right. with the calendar. Because that's where that's where events happen, but I think they're thinking about it in more of a right. let's get together now, like huddle, like right. let's all huddle around this thing and get it. Um, what's your thing? Uh, yeah, out of your I mean, five? I have a couple others. I'll read off here. I'll read off the the. Titles. I like your long shot one that you were very, um, you didn't have very much confidence in. That's a long shot. I feel like that one is three years from happening. Oh, well, that's why it's a long shot for next year. So, all right, I'll talk about that one. It was called Bye Bye Blog. Um, I think blogs have come and gone. I think the idea of a blog, a web blog, as it were, back in the Dizay, uh, just kind of like websites, I feel like the mashup between a website, a blog, and a social networking landing page, whether that be your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Twitter, I feel like that's all going to merge into one and it's going to have its own thing. It, you're not going to refer to something as someone's blog because a lot of people have just shifted all of their energies onto these social networks. So you don't consider, you don't say go to my Twitter blog. No, you go to my Twitter. You don't say go to my Facebook blog. No, you say go to my Facebook page. You say do go to my website where maybe I have a blog. Like, I feel like blog is just at its end. Like, people are just, it's over. Like, the idea of this one-off, shoot up these things once a day, I think the naming of it's going to change. In essence, it's going to go back to what it was back when websites were born, which is, ooh, a news section on your website. Um, and I think it's just going to become much more, they're all going to kind of combine into each other in this really weird mix where you won't, you'll be jumping from one to the other and not really know 
am I kind of on the Facebook page? Am I on the website? Am I on the blog? Where you know, and it's not really going to matter because your blogs gonna... have already changed. I mean, they were initially. I mean, they were really just a term that meant really easy publishing for people who don't know how to write HTML for websites. Right. And included in that will be some really neat neat yet simple content management features such as the ability to have a links area or a dynamic archive or calendar that builds or your last five posts like just content management system stuff right and they just called it a blog um well i definitely had a view it was usually it was usually blogs have a thing about being from a person so Yes, there are corporate blogs, but even our corporate blog, I'm hand quoting here, is, is from us. One of us writes it, and it is a personal standpoint. So that's where websites were, if you go to Coca-Cola's website, Coca-Cola's website isn't from the CEO of Coca-Cola. It's not like, hey, welcome to my website. It's like, here's information. Again, I think that blogs are just going to, I don't know. And part of it is I've always, I've been a website guy for a long time, so it took me a while to even to think of blogs as something useful. Um, I don't know. I really feel like the, the, the merging... I'm just finding more and more people interacting with, and we've even seen this, people want to interact with us more on these other platforms than they do on the blog or the website. They don't necessarily want to interact. They don't want you to tell them to come to your place to interact. They want to go to where they are. They want to be where they are and interact with you. Yep. And you have to be ready to do that in Salesforce Girly, and we'll talk about all the things that are coming up. But um, so anyway, that's the predictions for uh, or some of them. There's more in there. There's five of them or six, I guess, total. Go ahead and read them. Uh, they're at, they're at blog.arcusinc.com. Soon to be not blog.arcusinc. Yep. Um, so let's read the five, seven social media predictions from Mashable or pick one or two that are kind of interesting. Well, I can read you the seven, and then I can tell you which one I really want to happen. Okay, so read All me right. the seven. So first, Facebook growth plateaus, but engagement continues to surge, which is an interesting concept. Right. Like, I always hate the slide when we're at a Dreamforce or a Cloudforce or one of those where there's that intersection between, like, email users and social users. Yeah. Like, I just hate that slide. I don't like it. I, I feel like it's not truthful. Oh, okay. Like, because social users, like, I'm an email user. I have an email address. While I don't have an email address, I have six email addresses. Right. I feel like they're counting me a bunch of times in the social but only once in the email because there's the the whole thing that I have about that slide is that you can't sign up for any social media without an email address you just can't you have to have an email address to first sign up for something so for most so there's of there's no like, way to think of one that doesn't need I guess there isn't they there all isn't need it. they all need it the only so, now so now you're seeing things like sign up for this service with your login from that service which right. But you I guess you needed the email address the first time. Well, let's just talk about the big three. Google+, Plus, Twitter, and Facebook, you all need an email address. You need an email address. So, in, in, so I feel like they're in counting theory, three times as a social user and once as an email user. When in reality, I have like 10 email addresses. And like I have more email addresses than I do social accounts, or at least it's very it's close. It's close to this so, point. So I just feel like that's untruthful, right? Because at the very least, it should be one-to-one. Like, you, you right. shouldn't count me three times in one place and once in the other place. Right. But, also, even you should so, never, the amount of people who, and I think your point is, the amount of people using social should never outdo the number of people on, on can't. email because you have to have email at the door. It's impossible. I think it's usage. It's like, because I think they do it with search, whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep it going. doesn't matter. But, uh, either way, I, I actually think this one is, is, is likely to become true. The, the growth of Facebook has to plateau at some point. It there's only so just, many people on the planet. There's only so many people. But its actual Seven engagement now. of the users yeah. engaged on Facebook, it, that slide makes sense. Facebook's eating the web, right? Mm -hmm. That one, to me, seems right. Um, new social metrics for ads gain adoption. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Uh, this is the one I really hope happens. Really? YouTube, yeah. This is the one I cannot, I, I would... I think we disagree. And, and low low let confidence. Me, let me... Let me let me read it and then let me change it a little bit. So YouTube gains popularity in the living room. I want to change that from saying YouTube to streaming. Okay. Service. Not cable. Anything but cable. 
gains popularity in the living room because oh, yeah well here's the thing but that's I, like i mean that's a trend we're seeing a trend that's been happening for two right. years so i'm not sure youtube itself will be you know the thing because youtube's on my apple tv so i can oh. get youtube on my television yep. very easily built into your tv probably it's not built into my television oh, okay. but that's part of this um mashable right. prediction is that the google tv and some of these other internet connected tvs are just going to have youtube as like the default landing spot when you either turn the tv on or go to that part of the tv like when you hit internet, it's gonna land on YouTube. Can I can I say one thing about YouTube that will why it'll never for me go anywhere? I'm right there with you. I hope you say it. It, it's a mishmash of crap. It's a bunch of crap. And what I want to watch is the latest episode of Breaking Bad, and I know where that is. And you got to organize it in a way that makes it. Here's a, you have to organize it in a way that I want to engage with it. Netflix just did this with their iPad app. They they organized their new landing page that looks great. Like. You, you see the stuff you've been watching, you see other stuff, you like, but it's not a mismatch of people posting their cats, you know, dancing on keyboards. YouTube is too much. Here's the problem. I don't want to watch you. Um, I don't want to watch user contributed content. Well, I want to watch good content. What I think this is partially saying is that YouTube's going to be investing in Google premium yeah. content. Yeah. Like, YouTube will be able to deliver whether it's live, yeah, or whether it's just stuff that Hulu can deliver, yep, that kind of content. Now, I'm, I think this is let's take YouTube out of the equation and just say like you know, streaming internet, that is totally gaining popularity in the living oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was really close. I didn't pull the trigger yet. I may still. I'm a big um, NBA fan. I love yes. basketball. Yes, yes and you do. I love the fact that. I have the option of paying for the NBA League Pass for my cable provider. Right. And it's like $170 for the season. Okay. Or I can buy the broadband package for like $110 or $120. Yeah. And that allows me to basically – so the, the big package through my TV provider lets me watch it on my TV and the internet. Like my any like like my laptop, yeah. my iPad on an app, my phone on an app, okay, and the Apple TV. Or I could just do the broadband, and all I do is lose the TV. But I have it on the TV with Apple TV, and the Apple TV version yeah. is HD. The one that my cable company provides is not HD. Wow. Why would I ever choose to just get it on my TV when I can have it on my TV? I well, a couple reasons. One, TiVo. So you have TiVo. I just happen to know your cable provider. That's true. I could I, record a live basketball game. And go watch it. Or and stop it. And I guess you can pause and whatever. The reality is I'd never record a, a live sporting event unless it was my team. Right. And the my team happens to be the local team, which is blacked out on these league passes anyway. And you'd be lo you could record off the I local I could record channel. that off the local channel. So let's do a little rat hole. Go ahead. You happen to know that I... I went and bought this season. I used to be a DirecTV subscriber in my building, and I, this is all about streaming, but I used to buy, um, used to have DirecTV, and then they kind of got spotty in my building, so then I picked up another provider. And But this year, and this is all for the NFL, because I want the NFL super fan, super package, right? Everything, all the games, all you can eat, whatever. This year, PlayStation announced that they were reselling DirecTV package, streaming only, but on your PlayStation PS3. PS3 has HDMI and does full-blown full HD. The streaming was in HD. I thought, well, I gotta try this. And for 17 weeks, I, I set up and streamed, I have multiple on multiple TVs, this you know, uh, NFL games. And I'll tell you, it worked pretty well. Was it 100%? No. Did it sometimes spot out? Yes. Did it sometimes go based on what was happening on the internet, so it sometimes go a little spotty and then come back? Yes. But I hooked it up to my big TV at some points and watched it? Fine. I hooked it up to little TVs and watched it? Fine. And this is year one yes. of this. Well, so, it's year one of doing it through PS3. But They've this been would doing be year through, one of doing it through like right. Apple TV or yeah. anything like that. So we'll only them, get better. NBA last year. No. No? No. Did MLB, NHL, and no. NBA? No. We just added NBA? Yeah. Oh, all right. And just to continue down the rat hole, Apple TV is 
in discussions with the Premier League soccer ah, yeah. to be the like to be like the exclusive and and stream those games right. um, over the Apple TV, which would be outstanding. Because well, here in America, I love Premier League, and you only get like one or two games a week, maybe three or four, if you want to watch them in tape like right. later on in the week on like Fox Soccer Channel or ESPN. That would be phenomenal. I mean, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that cable companies have always had in their back pocket, which is that you can, that for sports and for things that are live, you can't get them through streaming. You can stream stuff that's sort of been pre-done. Sports is the last hurrah of this, and we're seeing it happen, which is pretty cool, through Apple TV, through others. Um, I'm excited just because I want options. I want all the options in the world. Yep. You know, I want to be able to watch stuff all over the place i want to i want to be able to and this is the world that we're living this is the best tv time i've ever lived in now is that i can have options i can record stuff live i can tivo it i can buy it on apple tv i can go to hulu and watch it i can go to netflix and watch old episodes i can catch up on you know watching gold rush which is really good watching season one on netflix streaming it every day I can start on the apple tv end up on the ipad i mean it's amazing what kind of content choices we have whether you want i mean you have to pay for it but um it's it's awesome. I think this is. I still don't think the cable company so they have that grasp because they still have the the pipe to your house. Yep. Until someone else can take it away from them, and Verizon can't really. But all right. So there's more, but I think we yeah. spent enough time on that. Again, a little less social, a little more streaming. I mean, they they YouTube considered social, so they took it there and said that they think that will rise. I think streaming will continue to rise not necessarily youtube unless youtube makes a big run at live and premium content yeah and i and again it'd be the last place i go i mean out of i all never the, go to youtube on never, my apple tv never, never go to anywhere i don't go to anywhere unless someone links to one and even then it's like i just it's it's for short little snippets of stuff that no one cares about i mean it's literally where it comes down to i want to go watch something sizable i make my choice hulu netflix apple tv or regular cable, and I kind of go, okay, well, I'm going to go with one of these and do it. Um, all right, cool. Well, now let's get to the, the meat. Enough of this streaming social cloud crap. It's theoretical predictions. Let's stuff. get into spring 12. And what's really going down. So uh, Salesforce put out their spring 12 release notes. Um, all the Salesforce geeks applaud. Yeah, Yay. they're very excited. Um, again, I started with the pre-release notes and then went on to graduate to the actual release notes. So if, just be careful if you have downloaded a copy. Um, make sure that you always have the copy that's on na1.salesforce.com. That's like the content link. An interesting thing that Salesforce has been doing for the last release or two, and I think they've done the best job of it in this release, is using their Facebook page. Mm -hmm. They're going to eat this dog food all day long they're gonna right. go to facebook.com slash salesforce and on the on the left side there's a spring 12 navigation page item and um up comes all these videos and discussions that people are having around um the release the actual link to the release notes it's right there on the facebook page i would recommend just going there and using that to get your uh to get your notes there's um you know faqs um, you know, a, a release preview, all the different features from the different sections, um, you know, developer type stuff. Just they do a really nice job with this Facebook page. Yep. So I would recommend strongly going there. And I think it's a really just a, it's a cool way to release a product. Just throw it on Facebook, let people comment on it. Right. And it's pretty transparent, pretty open about, you know, and it's a nice looking page. I mean, it looks yeah, really Yeah, they're nice. using the, uh, must I think be Heroku to do that somehow um maybe that's my guess but anyway so i wrote a blog post um as i do for every release which is a a rapid reaction sort of as i've skimmed the release notes haven't really dug too deep into them uh still reading them in depth takes me a while usually because i'm just jumping in and out of them at all times and then i end up reading the same thing like four times is it hard not to when you see the when you go into the top part that lists all the features and whether they're being installed yeah it's or really hard to not just click, click on, on the it. thing yeah. and jump all the way down like ooh, ooh, like yeah. an index like ooh, i want to see that yeah, now. wait that. i'll see it later so right. um here's my five i generally list five uh things that i think are interesting two of them are pilot features that um 
you know you'll you'll have to either ask to turn on or or uh, will be available shortly after the release is released but like not part of the full deal so i will say i read the whole the release notes just so we yeah. talk about that and i i mean i read it from from start to finish i didn't notice any of the this will be released during or after like in this last release we had the problem of it was supposed to be coming a thing but then they kind of pushed things back into like almost a couple months after the release I didn't see any of that, and I thought that was something they were going to take in and do. So does that mean that it's all going to hit on the time it's going to hit? I have a feeling that these release notes are going to change again a few times, probably. Okay. And you'll have to just keep looking back, and they're, what they have instituted is a change log, which right. never existed before. On the, so on the release notes On themselves. the release notes themselves, at the very top, okay. is, a re, is, a, is a log that you can see like what changed. Yep. Also in the in the like glossary or index section it says that like available immediately or like oh, it does if it's available immediately it doesn't say it it's like if it's not available immediately it says like available within whatever i really feel like they should put that very high up like yeah. what next to that when they're doing the this is going to be turned on or not i think that's a great place to put it put somewhere that's just, where it is Feel like yeah, maybe really? you missed it. Yeah, that's where it is. I mean, I was reading on my iPad, so yeah, like, you might have just skimmed it or something and missed it. Yeah. Anyway, so so the first one that I think is a this is a big one, uh, Chatter Messenger. Mm -hmm. um, I think the name even changed from the pre-release notes to the regular release notes. Yeah, I think, I think it's it called... went from Chatter Now to Chatter Messenger. It is right. now Chatter Messenger. Okay. So this is chat. This is what people asked for as soon as they saw Chatter. It was like, when or, can I chat? Or it's what they thought it was when they saw chat. <laughs> yeah, when, when can I just have a little conversation in real time and not this chatter thing that, like, isn't – it is but isn't real time. It's not. It's, it's never – it never turned into what they initially showed us at that first Dreamforce two years ago. Right. Where it was, like, live refreshing. It right. never became that. No. Um, and which is interesting because we've been using, will. we've been off of our, you know, transition over to Google Docs. We've been noticing a lot of the real time nature of Google Docs, including files showing up and obviously commenting. And so, interesting that they haven't cho chosen to do this. It must um, just be a performance thing. Um, I think it's very difficult to do. It's got to be really difficult. So anyway, Chatter Messenger is coming. Um, it's listed as a pilot feature, but I'm pretty sure you can just get it turned on if you ask for it. Um, you know, you'll have a couple of little features around chat. You know, you have a status, available, mm -hmm. not available. You can have a custom one or a way. Um, people in your little buddy list thing are going to be people you're following on Chatter. You can always add people into it. As favorites, yeah. As favorites. You could create a little list. Um, one thing that I saw was that it looked as though you could only have one chat window open at one time. I think that is true. I have yet to spin up a pre-release org to actually play with it. Yeah. And if I was in there by myself, I don't know who I'd chat with. Maybe I'd add you to it. Maybe. Perhaps. Uh, but if you can only have one chat window open at one time, that to me is a let's wait for Rev2. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely I have when I use chat we use or i use iChat with same here which and then it has multiple windows it's one so. window with tabs with tabs whatever but it's essentially eight windows right and i mean if i can only have a chat with one person or group of people at one time because you can add people into yeah. chat so you can do group chat but if i can only chat with you jason yep. but then i can't at the same time have a separate chat with partner who shall remain nameless yep then he's still nameless in 2012. Sure. Yeah, why he's not? still nameless. Yeah. He doesn't have a name. No name. Um, then I'm just gonna keep using iChat or Google, you know, our Google Talk until this thing can be better. Because Google Talk's more pervasive. It's it's in my iChat. Like right. I don't have to have a website open. Right. Maybe that would be cool if I could add this chatter messenger to a third party client and it's not going to have it's not going to have archiving google talk has archiving right. built in shows up in your you know archives um it'll be interesting to see what compliance people have to say about this chatter they messenger. won't turn it on no they, they will on. not here's the way i would like to use it um i think the world is just becoming about presence and that's not people getting them or giving them that's people that's sort of the understanding that 
I want to be I everything should be real time and know where I am and know where other people are and that's what chat is so cool about. When remember when they integrated it with email, you'd be looking at email and you get the yeah, email and you would see the like green, a green dot, green dot. Oh, that person's online at this very moment. That's very cool. To me, that's what this is doing. Even what Google Docs do, did with having when someone else is viewing the document, you see that they're viewing the document. You can see that there's other people live in that. It's present in the document, which is for collaboration. So whereas chatter can be both, you know, semi instant. And sort of email is very sort of, you know, sort of, it's not back and forth instantly. This is, I'm looking at an opportunity, and this is what I'm hoping, because I, I think there's, isn't there presence? I'm looking at an opportunity, I, I'm looking at the chatter, and I see that you're online looking at this opportunity, or you're online, and I can quickly ask you a question about it without chatting you and creating a bunch of noise. I can just go open up in chat window, and then we can have an impromptu chat about this opportunity or about this account and then close it out and move away. But I'm not saying, for me, it's it's just like Google Docs in that it's going to be in presence in the thing I'm talking right. about, in the but app. it's not gonna replace my overall chat. Right, in the right. app, Right. I'm looking at something, I see Jason's online in the app, I can right. just ping him there. You can ping him quickly. Right. And then we can have Or I can just turn around and talk to you. Right. But Sometimes. I prefer to not do that. Right. All right, so the next thing um, that I think is I'm a- I'm surprised you picked this. This is really? like, this is the littlest, tiniest little feature like- I love the little, tiny features. But this is- I'm a details guy. Yeah, you, wait, I just threw up my mouth a little bit. I right. love the little nitty gritty, the, the small things that make life easier. And I think this one's big. The attach files I, to comments. I have never tried to, I've never even thought about wanting to use this feature ever. Oh, I've totally wanted to do this a million times and it's just so annoying. And yet we are the people who chat with each other, so I wonder, or chat Well, it's like, it's like, where is this? And then it's like, well, all right, I can attach it, but I have to attach it somewhere else. And now it's gone from this conversation. This conversation just got fractured. Right. So Fracturing the whole attaching files to comments to me is like, where is this? It's here. Boom, it's in the comment. That's great. It's yeah. not at the top of the record or on someone's profile page or whatever. Yeah. I I think that's just I think that's just a way to keep the conversation going and mix that in with the new sorting values of post or post and comment date. Right. Well, now I could be looking at something and then a comment with a file and the file pops to the top. Yep. And it's the same notion of the file being at the top, except now it's in context. So this does bring up a versioning problem, which is that most people are not gonna go in and reversion stuff, and basically up, they're gonna keep uploading into the same. So I'll download it, then I'll re-upload it again, I'll download it, I'll re-upload it again. Well, I think that already exists in Salesforce. Uh, I know. I think that's still, that's it's, an issue that exists regardless of whether I can attach things to a comment or not. It's gonna make it worse. I'm not sure it will. Oh, all right. Next one, next one is I think good. this is really good. So This is a productivity. This is right up my this alley. This is right up your alley. I even linked to one of your old blog posts. Um, Getting lost and book, found in chatter. That's right. Chatter bookmarks. So one of the main issues that we both have had with chatter is, is read state. Yep. And the ability to mark a chatter as something that needs to have an action associated to it. So right. someone asked me a question in chatter. I want to answer them. I can't answer them right now. Let me flag it in some way to get back to it. You can't do that until spring 12 right. where you can actually bookmark a chatter post. So if someone asks you a question, you can't answer it right now. You'll get back to them in three days when you know you can put whatever you need together together. Bookmark it, set it, forget it. Go to your bookmarks a couple days later. It's right there, and it hasn't gotten lost in the hundreds of other chatter messages that have happened since the time when that person asked you the question. Right. It and it it af, it does half the problem of chatter, which it brings back the again. I'm 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 looking through a bunch of stuff. I do see that normally I know about chatters because I see an email, so then I flag the email, and that kind of works. Um, although I've been sort of defeats the whole well. It's, purpose. Some, it's someone getting your attention. Um, I will say this is helpful. This gets me halfway to where I want to be, which is I also want to be able to know where I left off. When I was reading chatter, how right. much new chatter has happened since the last time I was chattering? <laughs> so I can see, did I miss, have I missed three or four chatter posts by five people or have I missed 300,000? Right. And then have the ability to kind of do, I know this is a way to get back to old chatter, 
read state, this doesn't solve the problem of not having a read state. This, this kind of just says, okay, this means you can make it kind of unread. But it doesn't mean that you know whether you read the other stuff or not. Anyway, right. I like it. It's, I can't wait for this one. This one's a good one. Yeah. It also will, I think it's an option that you can get email alerts on comments that happen on posts that you've bookmarked. That you've bookmarked. Right? Okay. Which is a nice thing also. Kind so of you're favoriting sort of still, chatter. Yeah, you're favoriting it, getting staying in that right. post kind of. Um, what will be nice to mix these two together is if someone asks you a question and they're asking for a document and you can reply with an attachment in your reply. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. I wonder if that's gonna work. I actually, and I th attach the file to the comment because your reply is always right. a comment. Right. I should be able to just attach a document to it. Here's two things that I'd like to see. Go on. I, yeah. So <laughs> now we're getting lost in our chatter again. Chatter wants and loves and wishes. Um, with this bookmark, what I want to do is if it, if I get the email, I want to be able to reply, bookmark, and I want. Salesforce to understand. Don't put bookmark as my t as what my reply is. Bookmark it for me. Oh, that would be nice. We could, could probably, probably do that in Chatter. Could probably do that in, in our thing. And the other one was I was playing with the other day. I was asking for you uh, and the person should be named never uh, to go and to look at something. And I actually put a date on it. And I said, you know, can you look at by this date? And all of a sudden, I realized I'm now assigning tasks in Chatter, and I know Chatter tasks are coming somewhere. But I was kind of thinking, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we could have a trigger? And I know we could write this, but a trigger that would read through your ch your chatter, and if you say, if you mention somebody and put in a date, that it took that chatter and built a task associated to the person who you mentioned or pre people you mentioned and built it onto the record that you were then so as a real task that then would sync with whatever. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, all right, let's on. move off of chatter. Oh, good, and move into social. Yep. So social is now going to be called social contacts is moving to social accounts and contacts. Okay. And despite the name leaving out leads, it includes leads. Which is very good. Which is great. We need social leads. I argued on a podcast earlier um, when this feature first came out last year that I thought leads were just as important, maybe even more important than right. contacts to have social um, social intelligence on so not only are we getting social accounts and social leads we're also getting two new services we're yep. getting YouTube which I'm not really sure is all that important to have what does that say about my contacts anyway I'm not sure I even wrote in this in the blog post I'm not really sure what YouTube does for me but I guess more is better than less but I'm, I still don't know if that I don't know what are the oh, odds look. that you go? Oh, Jason I Atwood. saw your your dog peeing on the on the hydrant. Like, what does oh, that I do? I saw that you recently looked at those things. You I don't like even to think like that cat videos. I don't even think that that's the kind of thing that's available. I think it's more just your channel. I, yeah, it sure. doesn't. It your doesn't, comments. It doesn't make any sense. The other one's clout, right. and I think clout is actually pretty good. Like right. this one to me rivals the other ones that are even in there. Um, well, it depends how they do it. We don't. Depends how they do it. You're right. We don't know what it's going to look like. It could be twenty nine ninety five a month. You're right. It could be. <laughs> but I think this one's a good one because you can actually, using clout services, gauge a person's influence and engagement levels with certain topics. Right. So you could see what they're all about. You can actually, at a glance, see what that person is talking about without even really having to go read it. So let's but let's go back and talk about clout. I just learned about it because I read the notes and then I put in my, I just wrote down, gotta go, obviously gotta go play with clout yeah. now. And I signed up I and we've been with playing it with it before. A few months ago I had signed up for clout. I should have probably done it way before that because I would get these tweets like, this person did something on clout and said you should do it too or something along those lines. So I should have done it way before, but I did a couple months ago. Um, essentially you sign in to clout using one of your already existing uh, right. credentials, Facebook, Twitter, um, and then connect your other um, social um, personas to it. So yep. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Google+,
Tumblr, Tumblr WordPress, WordPress, Blogger, WordPress, Blogger all of them. Flickr. Name it. They're all there. Flickr, yep. you're right. Um, there's tons of them. The more you connect, the more clout you get. Yeah. But essentially, it goes through and can mine what it is you're talking about, right. who your followers are, who you're following, who's paying attention to you, who's commenting on things that you're commenting on, who's retweeting you, who's at mentioning you, who's who are you interacting with, right. and what are the topics that you're talking about. And I think that's the most interesting thing as like as a CRM salesperson user. It's very simple to go to like someone's clout and be like, you're a Jet fan. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to ask them. You just know. It just bo- it boils things up into these topics that you'll be following. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they do it. Again, it, it all comes down to the secret sauce. We, I've now played with clout for a couple of days. Enjoy it. Kind of like it. Not sure I love the algorithm. Like, I have – I've done a couple of my clout places, and I personally have a crap ton of LinkedIn users, like LinkedIn people, which – if I were doing a cloud score, I think LinkedIn would, is a pretty big cloud. Yet, it didn't really move the needle. I, in fact, I had my cloud score and then added LinkedIn and it didn't move the needle at all. I'm like, really? My 845 like LinkedIn people doesn't give me one more point in the cloud score? Like, that to me is like, well, that seems kind of odd. They're also missing places that I spend time where I think would. Now, Quora, they say, is coming. Quora to me is is a massive thing on clout because it's where you talk about stuff, where you give answer, where you are voted up in answers, like talking about really what your clout is. Me retweeting stuff from Benioff or from, you know, whatever. I don't know if that's really clout. And then they didn't really have any de- state. Uh, they didn't have have much about Facebook, right? They kind of did high level stuff on Facebook. I think they're pulling like public profile stuff, not really the deep stuff, which is people places connections so right. it's interesting it's 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 just something to compare a to b like you and i i you have a what what's your core now it's 40 41 right so like i have 35 someone else in the office had 19 I'm like oh look at you 19 i've got 35 <laughs> i mean that seems to be the, the <coughs> thing of it you know in two years are we all gonna go man should i hire justin or jason well justin's got a 42 clout let's hire him versus you know that's right and uh, the quick quick last one on social accounts and contacts, um, they'll now work with person accounts. So that's a that big sucks. deal for yeah. some specific right. industries where they're more likely to be using person accounts. And we did talk about the account side, that. which is that accounts, like right. a company can then have a Facebook, Twitter, what else? No? Um, they should have uh, – from what I I've read, I think one. it's Facebook and Twitter. I wasn't that, even that interested in the accounts one. Oh, I I think that's actually even more interesting. I was if more I, interested if I'm in I'm on one of our one. clients, let, let's say I'm on the Apple, Apple's not one of our clients. If I'm on Apple's contact uh, account page, I could then click and go, oh, let me see their Twitter, let me see their Facebook page, because I, I think those are great. We put them into our org anyway, and we track them anyway, but now it'll be kind of built in. So I think that's actually kind of interesting. I don't find the account ones that interesting, but whatever. Uh, And I saved what I feel is the best for last. Um, Certainly the most voted on. Many Who. Many Who. So Many Who is the ability to have one task. They're doing it with tasks first. I'm choosing my words wisely. I'm not saying activity. I'm saying task. Yeah, I think people want the activity more than they want the task, but whatever. Well, tasks are activities. Okay. I think people thing. want the events, events more than tasks, I mean. but task one task, many contacts. Right. Uh, so this is something that's been voted on hundreds and thousands of right. tons of times. They really the take them. Probably do a rearchitecture to do yeah, this. Yeah, probably. And essentially, you'll be able to relate the same task to many, um, many contacts, many who's. Right. And. Uh, the question was asked are you just creating a bunch of tasks and the answer is no it's like they were one doing task with, uh, repeating events they were just right. creating a bunch of events it's one task and yep. it's related to many contacts um, so you mark it complete it's complete on all of everywhere them. Um, you know I, I I'd love I think events is where this is more useful, personally. I mean, you have a meeting, and there's six people invited to it. 
that's what you really want. Right the now, task you, right is, now you only get the last person you added to the invite, or the person no, who's it's in the, the person who's related to. Right, but that's if you're it. using the calendar feature, you're putting them in one at a time and saying invite, invite, invite. Yeah, it's the last person you invite ends up being the person who you're relating it to. No, the person you're relating it to is the person you're relating it to. Mm, well. When you're inviting people, well, I invite people from the top where they're related to. I just type in their name and then I hit invite. Oh, I, I go to the it. bottom and just write in the add invitees and then type them all in. Nope, I do it the other way. I add oh. it from the top. Well, add to I just relate it to the person who I think is the person who I should relate it to yeah. as opposed to doing it that cockamamie yeah. way. Well, I just end um, up with the last person. Well, see, it's a little more random. We have to talk about your procedure there. <laughs> Uh, but essentially, you know, I think the event is the thing that's most more interesting because right. more likely there's multiple people associated to an event than there are a task. And I guess an email is considered a task, so that's kind of neat, right? You send an email to six people and it associates itself to the six of them. Should. Could. Should. Should. Will it? They're tasks. Emails are just tasks. Yeah. They're completed tasks. This is gonna. This is gonna be one of those things that I think is gonna. It's like much ballyhooed. It's gonna fall a little short. Well, this but. is gonna be one of those things that's gonna have to get a whole lot better over time. It's like I want like, a piece of cake. A this chocolate is, cake. Here's yeah. a jelly bean. Yeah. You want a piece <laughs> of cake? Yeah. Exactly. Here's the uh, the raw version of that. Yeah. Here's, <laughs> With, here's some not unsweetened cooked. chocolate. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this is the vegan version. Um, no offense to vegans. Vegan cake happens to be excellent. Um, so anyway, those were my five favorites. I did put a little caveat at the bottom that I purposely left three things out. Um, <laughs> these are my five favorite and the three that I'm not talking well, about. Well, I don't know enough about these three from just reading the release notes. I have to play with them. And I have played with the Analytics Edition um, in an org that was provided to Salesforce MVPs. Right. I got a chance to play around with it. It's pretty neat. Analytics are taking a huge step forward. Haven't seen pricing yet on it still. Um, Nor the answer of what we, the org wide answer. I'm not. pretty sure that is a yes. It's on or off. I, not in the notes. I, I'm pretty sure I know that that yeah. is the fact. Okay. Uh, the other two, uh, Live Agent. Need to play with that before I can write a yeah. blog about it. Uh, same with Chatter Answers. Both yep. of those. It's kind of funny. It's the first time I've ever seen this in a release notes. Both of those came with a little, like, almost like a warning. Yeah. Like, don't turn this on if you don't know what you're doing. Warning, you're not smart enough to turn this feature yeah. on. Warning, warning, warning. Please talk. You better know what you're doing right. if you're going to try and do this. What the notes seemed to say to me was, this is turned on in many, many places. This is not like turning on one feature. Like, so. Live Agent looked like you got to create a site. You yeah. got to create... Like a bunch of things to get this that to work. That is individually licensed. That I read. I was trying to figure out, is this free? Is this, it's individually licensed per user. So that means you can put, you know. And Chatter Answers just looks like, I mean, even Answers, to set up Answers, took a lot of steps. Like yeah. data categories and the answers and the this right. and the that. Chatter Answers looked like it was like, wow, this is a lot of steps to get this thing to work. Right. So, I mean, it was a very big service cloud release. Huge. Even though I don't think I mentioned one thing about service cloud in my entire write-up. Um, I'm more about the sales cloud myself. Right. And, uh, you know, Chatter, Answers, Live Agent, Knowledge Enhancements, um, all service cloud stuff. We'll talk about that in later blog posts, likely individual blog posts for each of these features right. just to give a good give them their credence because they are big features they deserve more than a paragraph and teaser for next week i will probably be writing on uh on features that are being depreciated so things that are kind of going away things that are gone well going, going. they're not gone because they that no longer work things that no longer work things that no longer turned on and uh, things that you can't turn on. I think I started. I think I started thinking about it. I went one way. I went the other way. So I think I have a good blog for it now because I've been thinking about it for a couple of days. And I was explaining it to a customer, and that's mm -hmm. always it's like it's like the wife test, girlfriend test, mother mm -hmm. test, whatever, you or significant other test. Uh, you know, go to explain to someone else, and the customer test is great because their customers they're paying Salesforce a lot of money, they're paying us some money, so they've got a stake in this, and explain to them why. 
like from a Salesforce side, why things would I think that'll come up in the blog post. So that'll be a blog. Cool. I'm excited for that one. All right, so that's uh, go to blog.arkasync.com and read our blog that there and all this, including the cloud predictions, including all the podcasts. We yeah. have to mention. Feel free to comment. We got a commenting engine on there. Discuss. We will respond. Yeah, I got uh, one today. We have to figure out a way. It only goes to one email address right now. I was thinking oh. about. I was thinking about trying to have it go into a case. Come in as a case and get I don't want that. Why? I will talk about category. I don't want it. Yep. Don't want it. Then we Let's talk about it. your picks. You don't have a pick written in the Google Doc. I will write it as you do your quick. Cloud I hate when you pick do of the that. Week. Well, I was caught off guard today. All right. So I'm going to pick something that I used over the weekend, and uh, I think it's pretty prevalent, but it works really well, and I think it's pretty fantastic. So. I'm picking PayPal Mobile for iOS. Wow. And I'm sure it exists for all sorts of other um, mobile devices like Android or whatever, but mine specifically for the iPhone. So I went to the Giants playoff game this past weekend here in New York, and uh, I had to pay the person for the tickets. Ah. And uh, I didn't have any cash on me. So I said, can I PayPal it to you? And he said, sure. And I whipped out my iPhone. And I paid him, and it took about three minutes. And he had his money, and I had my ticket, and it was pretty cool. Did you buy it? Was it paying a friend, or was it paying, paying someone you don't a know? friend? Paying oh, a friend. I'm paying a friend. Okay. So paying it forward. Yeah, paying it forward. So I didn't know. Um, or I, I didn't go to the bank. I knew I was going to pay him. I just knew I could pay him whenever. Right. I just didn't have cash on me. So I said, "Oh, why don't I just use PayPal? I have it on my phone. I whip right. it out. Boom, boom, boom." paid them, read for my contacts and my phone, and it worked flawlessly. It's free. Cool. Um, you just need a PayPal account, obviously, and you can do all sorts of management of your PayPal account from it, too. It's gotten a lot better over the years. So, PayPal Mobile. Pretty ubiquitous, but also pretty useful tool to have on you on your phone. Yeah. Um, another, so, here, this is, I'm making a pick, and this is going to be a little bit strange. This is a pick of something that I saw come out, saw it announced, downloaded it, installed it, played with it, not saying this is for everybody. So this is a, hey, look, this is like, I think it should get some notoriety because I think what they're doing is cool. Not sure it's the greatest app in the world or that it is, you know, something that everybody should run out and get. I want to put that as like, I'm making a pick, but I'm not saying it's like my, you gotta have it pick. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm making like a lot a, of my picks are like that. Right, where it's just like, <laughs> well, your picks. Yeah, my picks, picks are waste. So this is a pick called Force Mob. Okay, and it is a sounds cool. It is a iPad native application. I'm gonna log into it right now and I'll hand it to you so you can. Yeah, play I want to play with it. Wow, I'm doing it. it. It is a iPad native application that um, allows you to log in and see Salesforce data. Um, so far not impressed well and it makes it puts it in sort of a different view so it's okay. different than what you would normally expect oh, in fact okay. it is not the salesforce way so it everything's kind of it's it basically is using the mobile sdk which is cool um and you can see things like accounts huh. and contacts and opportunities and um you can see all sorts of cool stuff and it's basically the the, the trick of it is it's presented in a very um, warnings. Warning, yeah. low memory. Yeah, I don't know okay. what that is. It's presented in a very sort of new and maybe iPad-y looking feel. But this feels more like an iPhone app. Um, it's the way it slides and things like that. It's iPad, iPhone. Um, anyway, it's called Force Mob. It is not free. It's not? Uh, no, this is not. Now, there, this is why I'm going to give it a talk about it. Well, it's someone trying to make some money on a Salesforce development. Um it's four ninety nine. <laughs> your face. I'm just making clip. faces. I'm you sorry to the people who make Force Mob. Well, I'm is, just not sure this is worth that amount of money. That is why I'm talking about it. But it is for the our audience to talk about a iPad native mobile SDK use of um, thing. I, I think this is what's going to happen. So here's my 
here's my thing for everybody out there who don't start, do a great job with like the fields and the page layouts and stuff. It shows every field it, and it shows their shows their API like, name. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> so it shows you a lot of data, and you can certainly get to some stuff, but it is a little bit odd. And the icons are really what the worst for me because the icons are all over the place. You know, like, I have to ask. There's an eight ball for opportunities. Yeah, it's a little weird. I have to ask. You don't is have this to. something that? As an administrator, I could prevent my users from putting on their iPad. I don't think so. Like, a, is there a way to prevent them from logging into this particular? I did not need. You don't need a social because with the, the new OAuth stuff, you yeah. don't need your security token to get into these things. I mean, the event view is pretty sweet. I will say that. Yeah. So what it looks like is they started to do some cool the views. task view is pretty cool, but then they didn't really finish it. Like they didn't take it all the way. Like they were starting the, to do something, yeah. and the task view is really cool. And the well, now it's all right. Here you go. Yeah, now it's broken. Now it's frozen. Uh, uh, but I mean, that's the kind of thing that, as a, an administrator of a large org or even a even a small org, I don't want my users even looking at that. Right. Because that, to me, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because you can see all these fields, but like. It seems like it might even be like a security risk. Like I don't know if that thing respects oh, field to. level security. Yeah, yes, it has to. It has to. The API does. It's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it's not for everyone. I'm gonna say I would not pay five dollars for it yeah. unless I was doing research. I and I did. I paid for it because I am a selfish person. I need to know what's going on and what's out there. So if someone client asks me, "What is this?" I can go whatever i would say go use a salesforce sf viewer which is yeah. the one that's from the labs they just updated it it has new features it does a lot more um it's a little light on the chatter side when you click on chatter on the on the mobile app it bring it just renders a full website page like it's better than the mobile yeah i guess better than salesforce mobile which um, doesn't even have it so anyway button. force mob 499 for the ipad i would read reviews but here, here's here's why i'm bringing this up this there was a point to this as we get on to our almost hour-long podcast. See, we're making it up. We're Wait, making this, it. Is, this is the... We missed last week, so we're giving you double the podcast yeah. this week. Uh, yeah. So, with the new mobile SDK, yeah. there's going to be a lot of these apps coming out. Yep. They're going to be all over the place. And it's just kind of like where there's the Google Voice apps. You know, there's like hundreds of them. And there's Google Docs apps. And like people are all going to be getting into this game of like creating mobile apps and trying to sell them. Here's what I would say to the people listening to our podcast. Realize now with the mobile SDK that people can do these apps, but that doesn't mean that they are good. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're going to do what you want them to do. Like Since there's been so few apps from Salesforce in the last three years on the iPad, it's like now, now there's going to be a proliferation of them, and there's going to be a lot of crap. So just buyer beware on most of these. Um, Again, when they do something interesting and cool that, that nothing else does, I mean, the two labs products are pretty the best, but a lot of these are going to start to come out now because you're going to be, with the mobile SDK, you're going to be able to do some cool stuff. This is not really cool stuff, but I think there's going to be like Salesforce, Sales Viewer, and then that's going to be $1.99. It's, there's going to be tons of them. So read your reviews and make sure, check with us. Tweet As us an up. admin, I'd really love to block this stuff, and maybe yeah. there is a way. I just haven't had the chance to look yet. Yeah. So I really want to block this stuff from my users. I want to control their experience. So if you want to discuss all this, uh, you can discuss it with Justin at Just Edelstein. It's twitter.com slash Just Edelstein. I'm at Jason M. Atwood. We're also at Clout. Clout slash Jason M. Atwood. Clout slash Just Edelstein. I don't know. Whatever. I don't even think that's the Earl. Go to... Whatever. We're at Facebook. Facebook.com slash Arcosync. And of course, for the podcast, subscribe to the podcast. We actually got a new review the other day, which is nice. So we like to I see love some, that. We like to see some new I reviews. I love getting reviews. Yeah, give especially us reviews. when they're good. Yeah, don't give us bad reviews. Yeah, if you don't, don't like do it, that. just stop listening. Download it, just don't listen to it. Yeah. Uh, and until next week, uh, we're kicking off 2012. Uh, enjoy those uh, nice